There is a boy who was locked in a box for 23 hours a day. And for 178 days, he is completely by himself in a room so small. When he stretches his arms, he can almost touch both walls at the same time. In a room so small, it feels like the walls are closing in on him, mostly because they are, mostly because he is still growing. He is only 16 years old and already corroding between maximum security walls, cuffed wrists, and cracking voice, prisoner identification number, and learner's permit, locked in a solitary confinement cell the size of a small parking spot but feels like the trunk of a car, crushed beneath hundreds of hours of forced isolation, desperately searching for human contact only to collide with the sterile walls of his shrinking cell. And he isn't alone. Across the city, in a juvenile detention center, a young girl's trapped in a box for 23 hours a day. While most of her girlfriends worry about locking parents out of diaries and bedrooms, cell phones and Instagram accounts, she is locked in to a six by eight foot cell, smothered between walls barely wide enough for her to breathe. She's been holding her breath for 254 consecutive days now, and it's beginning to get to her head. When she's awake, black spotted hallucinations haunt her vision like mascara clumped thick in the corners of her eyes, and when they're closed, she drowns in the muffled screams of other suffocating youth pounding on her walls, begging for someone to listen. Will it be any surprise when she finally starts screaming back? When he finally cracks his skull like a sledgehammer against the concrete walls of his cell. When she slits wrists to resist solitary existence, carving trapdoors, underground tunnels, fire escapes through skin and cell walls smeared in their own blood. Corrections officers will call this attempted suicide. I call it survival, a last desperate attempt to escape their shrinking cell. Every day, teens across America sacrifice their bodies to avoid the violence of forced isolation. Somewhere in this country, a boy chooses risk to the bone. A young woman forces a battery inside herself. A teen knots a makeshift noose around their neck and ties it to whatever will hoist them from this hole. Self-harming for the promise of human touch, even if only through coroner's gloves, suicide is more common and solitary than any other part of prison and we still do it. Send our children to the box for talking back, for horsing around. Many aren't even convicted of a crime in the first place, guilty of simply not being able to afford bail. This isn't discipline. This is human experimentation and we already know the results. How many isolated youth will emerge missing pieces of themselves? How many will return to jail like a child to an abusive parent? And how many youth will make caskets out of their solitary confinement cells? A boy and a girl are locked in a box. They are only 16 years old and still growing. But what room is there for growth in a cell with barely enough room to stand? What room is there for therapy and rehabilitation when trauma is promised 23 hours a day? Solitary isn't punishment, it's torture. Drawn and quartered with no horses, waterboarding whole bodies buried beneath brick and mortar. Extraordinary rendition, every isolation cell, a black site on American soil. Every isolation cell, an iron maiden closing around hundreds of youth each year. May each youth solitary confinement cell swing open so we can treat the youth inside. And when they free the youth inside, inside. A boy and a girl are slowly falling apart with our hands on the doors. All they can do is wait.